Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, today I'm very excited to welcome you back to the survival world of Ventia. And listen, I want to get right into things, so if you happen to enjoy this type of ambitious building content, feel free to subscribe, and hey, possibly even leave a like if this video tickles your fancy. But in this episode, I'd like to build a ruined castle up on this vacant hill and bring you guys along for the ride. This to me feels like a great excuse to use a lot of the new blocks, so without any further ado, grab your snacks and drinks and let's get right into the video. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's good to see ya. And I know you might be a little bit confused, like why is Antler Boy wearing armor? That's that's really strange. And you're right, it's not really like me to be dressed to the nines like this. But it's also not really like me to go exploring as much as I have in 117, so I've been taking a lot of damage. Anyway, today, ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned before, I would like to build a ruined castle up on this hill, and we got quite a lot of space to work with. In fact, we even have this old tower that I built a really long time ago. In fact, I think I built this in that episode where I spent 24 hours of terraforming and building in this world, and today I kind of want to update this thing using the new blocks. Because for the new castle here, we're going to be using the latest blocks in the game for our block palette. In fact, I went and collected a ton of cobbled deep slate so that we can get all the deep slate variants that we want. And I even went and got a bunch of blackstone and crying obsidian for the piglin bartering farm and some basalt from the nether. Basalt? 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 I think it's basalt. Now, normally when I make one of these videos, I bring you guys in kind of late in the process. Like, I usually have a pretty good idea of what I want to do, but today I'm not exactly sure, so I figured I'd bring you guys in right from the beginning. Now, this is the land we're working with, so I figure we're probably going to have a broken down tower up here. We're going to break this one up a little bit more, although I do think I want to keep it kind of complete. I figure since this tower is in a really good strategic position to look out over every single entrance to the valley, they'd probably refurbish it a little bit, so we're not going to destroy it too much, but we're still going to make it clear that it's part of the ruined castle. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get a bit of a layout going and deep slateify this tower. Alrighty, so my plan here right off the bat is to block out where we're going to have the larger structures and where we're going to put the walls. And so my very first decision was to plan another tower right across from where we have the current one, and there's going to be a wall sloping down following the terrain along the path down there. Then I moved on to the other side of the castle where I'm going to put a tower right by the edge of the cliff, and I think it could look really awesome if we make the tower broken down and crumbled, and so you can actually find the debris down on the path below. But after building the outer walls down there, I decided to go back up to the top and add a little bit more of a structure to the first tower area. And just to be totally clear and transparent, all of these decisions I'm making right now are not final at all. I'm just giving myself something to work with. And in fact, my guess is that this layout is going to go through a lot of changes, but I'll tell you guys all about that. But then I add one of the larger additions, which is going to be the main keep of the castle, this sort of larger building. And I think I want to add another one. I'm just not quite sure yet where I'm going to put it. So I'm hoping that starting the process is going to give me a few bright ideas. Personally, I think I'm probably going to replace that tower in the middle of the long wall with another structure, but we'll see. For now, this is going to be the layout that I'm working with. And after laying out my plans, it was time to change up all the stone and replace it with the new Deep Slate variants. What's great about the new Deep Slate blocks is that they create a gradient all the way from the old stone to the darker black stone. And I think the most fun part about transforming this tower was just figuring out which of the darker or lighter variants of the block I'd use where. Now when it comes to the future of this ruined castle, we're going to use a lot of tough and mossy blocks and try to mix it up and make it look really broken down and overgrown. But since this tower is actually in use in modern times in the world, we don't really have to mix up the block so much and signify decay. So I'm going to try to stick to mostly deep slate variants. And you'll see that after I finished transforming the tower, I decided to do a little bit of terraforming around it. Just change up the stone, add in some tough to make the gradient a little bit smoother. Anyway, I'm super happy with how this transformation turned out. I think it gives the tower a little bit more character. But guys, let's keep working on the castle here. I will see you on the other side. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we ended up with, and I think it looks awesome to have these darker colors in the area. And one of the things I really want to mix into the ruins that we're going to build over here is some mossy blocks, and to get mossy blocks, we're going to need vines. Now, unfortunately, this is the extent of my vine farm, so I don't think this is where we're going to get our vines. We're just going to have to go to the jungle and collect them manually, which is fine for now. However, one thing I'd like to check before we go out there is our axolotls right here. And you you know what? I think I know just the place to put these guys. See, 
underneath the bridge over here, we've got this little pond. And we do have a few tropical fish down here, but I think I'm going to just place these guys down in here. Ooh, we got one of the brown ones, and of course he killed the fish. Yeah, I should have seen that coming. And then we've got the pink one. Oh, you're so cute. And finally, we have the blue one. Now, you guys are going to have to help me name some of these guys, but I think we're going to have to name one of them, and it's going to have to be the pink one. We're going to name you Axel. Some of you might understand the reference. The rest of you might just have to ask around in the comments, but the blue axolotl and the brown axolotl need some names, so definitely give me those in the comments below. I'm thinking we gotta collect way more of these guys and fill up this pond with a ton of them. Anyway, let's fly across the desert all the way to the jungle and collect some vines. Ah, uh, yes, the jungle. And honestly, I gotta say, there's nothing worse than collecting vines, so we definitely have to build a vine farm pretty soon. Ooh, and as we fly back in, we get to see the new tower. I think that looks just awesome up here. It used to blend in with the cliffs here a lot more when it was stone, but now I feel like it really, really stands out. All right, we now have all the mossy blocks we're ever gonna need. Now, this castle is gonna take quite some time to build, but I think I wanna start with this part right up here across from the tower. And to be completely honest, I think the best way to build a ruined castle is to build it complete first and then ruin it yourself. I know that seems like kind of a tedious process, but honestly, it's the only way to do it. And the plan's to make this place about 150 to 200 years old, and this place got destroyed in an invasion, so it's gonna be a very very, very ruined. So I think I'm going to go about this tall. That makes it about as tall as this lip part right here. And I think I'm going to do a very similar thing. And so there we go. That's going to be the first part. And it looks a bit strange right now. Like this part looks a bit blocky. We're definitely going to mess this up a whole ton so it doesn't look as symmetrical and perfect. But for now, let's move on to the rest of this tower. See, I kind of imagine that this tower would have had a top part sort of like the one across. But since we're going to break this down, it would have definitely fallen down below. Now, next up, I think I want to tackle this tower here on the corner. So for this one, I'm going to do something really similar where we make a kind of complete tower like this, a brand new one, and we tear it down. And I think I want to make this part a little bit taller than the other one. All right, so there we have it, a little bit taller. And for this one, I want to make something a little bit interesting. If you guys remember back when I was building the village over there, I built this three by three tower that I was super happy with. And I think maybe we could make a different version of that right here. Except the plan today is to use only deep slate to make it look a little bit older. They didn't have the fancy roofs that we have nowadays. And so I'm just going to use deep slate. Unfortunately, we don't have anything that's gray like this in the form of fences. So I'm going to have to use dark oak, but hopefully it's going to look okay from a distance. And here we go. All right. I think that's looking awesome so far. I mean, obviously, we still need to ruin this thing, but I think that's going to be the next step. Now, the fact remains that we've only used the cobbled deep slate so far, so we definitely have to mix things up. So let's start working on the connecting walls right here, and we're going to make them really ruined like this, just super inconsistent. I think something like this is going to be absolutely perfect as soon as we get this variation in, and I really think texturing is going to be the name of the game when it comes to this build. Okay, now before we start doing the texturing, take a good long look at this because we got to make it a little bit more imperfect. So let's do this. Let's start tearing this thing down. Although I got to say, it does feel a bit weird to tear something down that you just built. I'm thinking something like this for this side, and we'll try to do the same on the other side. Now, we do kind of have to think about where all this rubble would have gone. So we're going to have to build some piles of debris down here on the path. I don't think I'm going to go quite as broken here on the other side, but we still want to manage to break it up a bit. You know, I think that's going to do it for ruining this part. Let's go ahead and break down this tower. And, you know, it feels like kind of a shame to mess this thing up, but it's got to be done. And, you know, I think just a little something like that so we can put some debris down below is going to be enough because I really don't want to ruin this tower anymore. It makes the place look so good, and I just don't want to ruin any of my 3 by 3 towers. Now, when it comes to doing the texturing here, I think we're going to take a darkest block first approach. And so these are the dark blocks I'm going to be using, and we're going to start with a smooth basalt. And so I'm just going to start texturing some of this in, sprinkling it in towards the bottom of the build. Then I'm going to grab some of the regular deep slate 
and just mix it in here and there. Next up, we've got regular basalt, and I want to use the top texture of it. And you know, perhaps the corners here could have some of these cracked stone bricks as well. You know, so far, I'm pretty happy with this, but we got to bring in some of the lighter blocks. So let's start with a tough, which I want to use towards the top mostly. And after we've got the tough in, we can replace some of it with some of this mossy cobblestone, just mix it in wherever we see fit. And in the end, we get something like this. And as soon as we mix in our leaves, I think this is going to look absolutely perfect. But I love this. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me just get my blocks together and in order. And let's time lapse me texturing this whole place. And after that, we can move on to some of the rubble that we need to place down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I am so happy with what we have so far. This is looking so overgrown and just the way I imagined it. Now, just imagine once we have the whole thing here. I love how it just blends in with the terrain a lot. Like, you kind of have to look twice to even see that it's there. It's sort of like the castle's being forgotten and nature's taking back what was once hers. Anyway, you guys know how I mentioned this little tower section over here before and how it's standing here on the edge and we're going to have some of the rubble fallen down and close to the path down here. Here. Well, I kind of want to do something similar up here. Since we have this section that's fallen out of the tower, well, it would kind of fall down right here. So maybe we need to create a little pile of rubble right here. And so I'm going to do the same thing for this and just blend in a bunch of different blocks. Maybe we'll even put some more mossy up here. And perhaps we'll make it sort of like a trail, like all the rocks have kind of fallen down this way. Oh yeah, I definitely like how that looks. It tells a bit of a story here on the world as well. Perhaps we could do something similar with these sections right here because this side looks like it's really fallen down and so maybe part of it would be right here and I think this right here would be the perfect spot to put some more debris okay so we got a little bit of rubble up there and now we've got some down here as well and I think it looks really awesome to be honest another thing I'd like to see if I could fit in anywhere are the glow berries and to do this we might need to create a few spots that are overhanging perhaps something like this so that we can put a glow Glowberry down. It really is too bad you can't put glowberries underneath these bushes. Oh, and guys, when I built this thing, I kind of left the interior super empty like this. So we got to do something about that. What should we put in here? I should probably just decorate it as a guard tower, but I think it would be cool if we had a staircase downwards, maybe underneath the mountain, but also that connects up to the rest of the ruined castle here. I mean, it's no secret to anybody that my city here is very inspired by Italy, and building these ruins really reminds me of the time when I lived in Italy and going to the Roman Forum and checking out all the old ruins, I just thought that was really awesome. The fact that it was right in the middle of the city and the fact that we're creating a similar vibe to that when walking down through this town and you can just see some ruins up on the hill. I just think that's really cool. You know, ooh, this is actually a really awesome sight line right here. It just gives the world that much more history, you know, and I think we need to do these types of things a lot more. Wow, yeah, I've definitely felt like that hill has been way too empty for such a long time, but now that we have have something up there it's just improved things so much oh yeah and a thing i really like to change here in the world are these old flags that i built and so let's start with this one and see what we can come up with all right, I think that's a lot better. And honestly, I think we need to update the flags up on the castle as well, and probably these mini ones up on the monastery. So let me know in the comments if that's something you want to see. But you know what we haven't done and that we have the possibility to do now is to check this place out in shaders once again. So let's turn them on and give it a go. 
As we're checking things out with Shaders, I just wanted to say that first of all, of course it's my luck that Shaders come out one episode after what was going to be the world tour. And secondly, I just want to thank everyone who's watching, whether it's the first video of mine you're watching or if you're a long time viewer, I just find it incredible that people want to watch what started as me documenting my survival world progress and trying to get the hang of making videos. Well, I'm still trying to get the hang of making these videos and we're almost 3000 subscribers strong at this point. So thank you so much for being a part of my survival world and look forward to seeing a lot more coming soon. I'm pretty busy this summer, but I swore to myself to be as consistent as possible and get these videos out for you guys. So once again, thank you so much. And if you watch this video all the way to the end, then you're the champ and I appreciate your existence. And until we see each other next time, have a good one.